Hi, my name is Robert Maddox, and I want to thank you for joining me today. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this reel. I just got it. It's um, it's a PC Fun, and this is their Chaos 40. This is PC Fun's first round reel, and we're going to unbox it right now. Let me tell you something about this reel. Um, this is kind of cool. You can see here the schematic is printed right here on the flap of the box. Nice touch. Let me read you some specs on this reel, all right? So this round reel here, let me get it out. This is the PC Fun Phantom. This reel uh, has seven bearings. Its gear ratio is five, three to one. It, uh, max drag is 16 pounds, which is more than the 5600 Ebo Garcia, quite a bit more actually. The weight of this is 11.2 ounces, which is actually lighter than the 5600. And then 12 pound mono, it's 200 yards. <clears throat> and uh, 40 pound braid, you can get 210 yards of 40 pound braid. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see what's in the box other than just the reel. So, it looks like you get a, just a little wrench here. Oh, here's interesting. You do get two extra white brake pads. Uh, that's kind of nice to have. So, that's cool. So, you get two extra brake pads. You get the small wrench which is used mostly for the handle here, for a handle nut, and looks like you get a schematic, nice big schematic here, let's see if you can open, and you get this nice big schematic here, and parts list, on the other side, is some assembly instructions, just in case if you take this apart, for just basic maintenance, there is kind of a trick to make sure that all these posts, you can see these posts here, go back to where they're supposed to be and they go back properly without binding up the reel. Well, okay, so what we're going to do now, because we are in a workshop, is that we're going to take this thing apart, we're going to take a good look at it, and we are going to see right here what this thing's made of, okay? I'll be right back. Rule number one, anytime you take a reel apart, it's important to have that schematic handy in case something goes wrong. Um, if you can't, if you don't have the schematic, go out there on the internet, find it, print it out, and keep a schematic for every reel you have. It, it will make a difference if at the end of the day you put your reel back together and you find out you have a leftover part, okay? So, always have that schematic handy. Now, you need a good reliable screwdriver, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to remove this left side spool tension knob and take a good look in there and you can see that, that spool is meant to ride right up in there we want to put a little grease up in there when we're before we put it back together now what we're going to do is using our trusty little tweezers because I've removed most of these screws we're going to remove most of the screws here for the left side plate and again, put everything in order the way it came out. Okay, they're all the same size, so it doesn't matter. This should now just come out gently. And there you go. All right. We can pull the spool here. All right, let's just set the frame over here and the rest of the body. And while we have the spool, we have the side plate. And here's something that's interesting to note. Take a look. It's all stainless steel and aluminum. Now this is a hardened uh, plastic, but there's no stress on this, and it's plastic in every single reel. Um, and there's a reason why these are plastic, and it's a safety issue. But that's not a problem. And you can see that in here. There you go. And that's it. And you see here, this is an adjustable spool tension knob. And there's numbers here, and you can actually adjust it from zero. It looks like from zero to... Looks like 10. You can adjust the tension on the spool. All right. 
Well, let's take a look. That's the left side plate. We'll take a look at the spool here. What we got here is this is where this fits in. You can see how the plastic gear is there. See how they mesh there? Next, what we'll do, and look at that. Look at the braking system on this compared to most Abo Garcia or other round reels. One, two, three, four, five, six centrifugal brakes on this reel. Um, that's pretty cool. That's a tremendous braking, and that'll come as quite an advantage on a windy day. All right, uh, that's great. Spool looks like it's aluminum, sturdy, and hardened. I would say 6061. That's excellent. Let's take a look inside this reel a little bit more. That would be a break. So here we have basically the frame and the right side plate handle. And if we took a look here, we can see that the worm gear here is brass stainless steel stainless steel the pins are all stainless steel and the real foot here is stainless steel that's wonderful look inside there you can see that that's where the centrifugal brakes right inside of there that's basically called the brake drum and what we'll do is we'll take this q-tip here and run it around inside there and we got a little bit of blackness out. That's what causes real squeak more than anything else. It's just debris and just all kinds of crap that gets up inside there. Look at that. And that reel's never even been used and we still got a lot of crap up out of there just from the manufacturing process. So what we'll do here, let's take a look at this worm gear real fast while I have it open. As you can see, it's, it, it is stainless steel. The worm gear casing is stainless steel. It's all stainless steel. It looks to me, from what I can see, it looks like there's grease in there from the factory. So what we'll do real quick is we'll just take some of our more viscous thick oil. This is Super Lube. It's a multi-purpose synthetic oil. I use it a lot for reels, but as you'll notice in here, it's real thick. This is pretty viscous stuff. And that will really stay, there we go, that'll really stay in there in that worm gear and keep it protected. Help seal out salt water, corrosion. And we'll get a lot of years of use out of this reel and out of this particular worm gear if we keep those teeth clean. What I want to do here is I want to test to see how tight the cap is real fast. Let's see. I want to make sure that that cap is tight. It certainly is. If the cap isn't tight, what will happen is that there's a little cam inside there, a little dog-eared cam that rides inside those grooves. And what happens if this isn't tight is it won't ride properly. It'll skip over, and you'll start getting too much line on one side or the other of your worm gear. It's one of the things that causes that, other than just uh, wear and tear and corrosion inside the worm gear. Okay? All right, so that's the that's the frame here that we got. Stainless steel pins, brass, stainless steel. This thing, so far as I can tell, is built like a tank. Let's go ahead and get the handle off and get into that right side plate, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the handle. And we've loosened up the handle nut. And we're just going to pull the handle right off of there. Oh, looks like there's a... Yep, sure enough, there is. There is a small seat clamp right there and be very careful when you're removing these seat clamps because it doesn't take much for that little clamp right there to go flying across the room and you'll never find it again so let's set it down right there nice and neat pull that handle off of there the handle is made of aluminum, has aluminum caps on it. it seems pretty sturdy. Set the handle right over here. By the way, I was surprised to see that the handle uses a standard uh, 
hand handle nut that you can buy anywhere, get anywhere. As a matter of fact, I believe if, uh, when we did the unboxing, it had the wrench right there in the box. So that's uh, pretty handy. So, okay, this is the little washer here, spacer washer that you need that helps create enough space for the handle between the star drag. We're going to screw the star drag. Also aluminum. Okay, looks good. We'll take off the other spool tension knob. Okay, there's a the retainer in there. That's going to need a dab of oil. Or I mean, I'm sorry, dab of grease up inside there. And we'll get that on the way back. If you look close, there is a bearing right there. Okay. So we got one bearing there. Oh. So if you look in here really close, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'll try to get it up to the camera. This is the pinion gear. And of course, this hooks on the other side, on the right side plate, to your main drive gear. But if you look close, you'll see that this pinion gear supported by a bearing this is very cool this really helps keep this reel the gear system on this reel aligned under heavy load under stress this pinion gear will stay in place because of that bearing and that means that the other end of this pinion gear will stay perfectly aligned with the main drive gear fighting that big fish or under heavy stress or load okay <clears throat> so what we do here is we'll just pull these off. These are just spacers. But these are not just spacers. These washers here are your drag washers. And they're especially made and they have to be exactly replaced the same way let me show you when you take them out okay when you take them out this is what they're going to look like can you see the spacing there they're not they don't lie evenly together and that's the way they're supposed to be if they lie like this there's no space there's no room for your, it's too much pressure on the drag and the whole reel will feel like every, as you tighten on the drag, you won't be able to turn the handle. If you start to feel that, you know that you've reversed these washers. These washers have to be opposing. They shouldn't lie evenly together. It should be opposing. Okay. All right. So we'll make sure that we put those exactly the way we took them out. All right. And what we have here now is we're down to simply removing this right side plate okay so I'll be right back okay so as you can see we've removed the right side plate and basically all you have to do is get a screwdriver here any screwdriver will work and just loosen these pins they stay in and um, you can just pull this this side plate off this is the gear gear cover plate and then you there are two screws here you can see the holes here and here these are the screws you undo these screws here and the whole entire gear plate like this will drop right into your hand this is the gear plate there's lots to talk about here but one of the most astonishing things i i've seen in a long time and i, I want to point it out was sitting down inside here many of you will recognize that this is an anti-reverse okay that's an anti-reverse bearing but in a round reel uh, such as this, I have never seen, never, I have never seen a bearing that sits on top of the anti-reverse. And look, see, look, at it. it goes right inside there like that, just like that. This little piece goes up in here like that. Now, what does this mean? I'll show you real quick what it means and how significant that is. Let me real quick, before I talk about anything else, carefully pull off the gear stack okay this is your shaft right here the, the entire drive shaft sitting at the bottom is a small bearing right here 
Now, when this reel, if it, let's say you have a 30, 40 pound blue cat on or a big flathead on, this reel is under tremendous strain and tremendous torque is pushed down uh, on this dry shaft. This bearing here helps stabilize that dry shaft. But the fact that the that PC Fun has taken the time to put a bearing up here simply means that now they're supporting this dry shaft from the bottom and from the top. Just like they did, same exact concept of what they did with your spool shaft. Um, and of course the pinion, uh, the pinion gear, which is supported by a bearing, which I can't show you now because it's at the bottom here of the pinion gear without dropping everything off the gear stack. Okay. So that's significant. That's pretty cool. That's special. Um, as a guy that's serviced reels for 20 years, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. So we, here we have, here's the gear plate. And let me quickly point out some things in the gear plate. Um, so the yoke is here. And the yoke is plastic. It looks like some kind of uh, milky, really hard looking plastic. Even sounds very hard. Um, this part here isn't under much stress. So there's no reason for this to be anything but plastic. It's fine. Um, I see that these, these springs here, which is a yoke springs, are very beefy and large. That's a good thing. Here's the, the, the clutch plate down here. It's also made of the same white hard plastic. But you can see here, this looks like to be possibly aluminum here. So it's a reinforcement. And this is where your thumb bar, as you look here, this metal stainless steel piece fits in there and travels up and down. And that actually travels up and down in this slot here. Okay, So that's how that works. Um, I already showed you the gear stack. So we'll quickly, what I want to do now is let's see what this puppy's got for 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 uh, drag discs. Okay, so let's see what we use here. Quickly, want to see here. All right, well, there the bell. On. We'll get the bell washer off. What do you call that? Okay, so there's one right there, and then it's carbon fiber. Okay, and the next one, stainless steel, carbon fiber. That's a non-asbestos one that sits down there on the, just a, really just a spacer is all that does. And we'll get this one out here. Another Belleville washer there. And another carbon fiber down here. And there you go. All right. So that's basically the PC Fun Chaos. All right. This is going to be a part one of a part two. Part, uh, the part two is going to be lubing this guy back up and putting him back together. Um, so listen, stay tuned. We'll come back with another video to show you exactly where you want to lube and how you want to lube and what kind of lube or grease we want to put on these drags. Now this reel specifically is going to be used in fresh water. This is not going to be used um, in salt water, but if it were going to be used in salt water, uh, it would be tremendously more uh, grease than what, what we're going to put on this. So just know that what you're going to see in the next part of this video will be greasing this up and, and uh, lubing this reel up for use in fresh water, for big freshwater cats, all right? So thank you for joining me today in my workshop here in Las Vegas. And until part two, we'll see you next time.